Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. Oh, and there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. What? It's over the bar. Today's RGGA podcast is regretting not hanging a Wexford jersey behind him like Rory <laughs> O'Neill. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the RGGA podcast. Um, today, we are looking for the best football goalkeeper of the All-Star era. Well, we think we found him, but we're going to have a chat about it anyway. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Tomas O'Shea, Kerry Legend, and Sunday Game Pundit, Shane Curran, Ross Common, goalkeeping phenomenon, and Rory O'Neill, series producer of the Sunday Game. I am Mikey Stafford, and I'm delighted to have you all with us. So, um, just wanted to just warn you, lads, that I am, in fact, a Junior B goalkeeper of summer now, and so if myself and Shane get a bit technical later on, sorry about that. We'll try, we'll try and dumb it down for you, because obviously goalkeeping is an art, and uh, we can get a bit caught up in it at times. So, um, let's start at the start, I guess, and just kind of give you the top 10 as voted for by uh, the readers of RTE.ie and the News Now app. We ran a poll last week, over 7,000 people responded. And uh, so uh, here, cue the, cue the top of the pop music, and here we go. At 10, we've John O'Leary. At nine, Martin McNamara of Galway. At eight, John Kieran of Cork. Seven, Fergal Byron. Leash, uh, six, Paul Durkin, Donny Gall. Five, Martin Furlong, Offaly. Four, Charlie Nelligan, Kerry. Three, Rory Beckett of Monaghan. Two, David Clark of Mayo. And at the top, with Almost 4,000 votes out of 7,000. We have Stephen Cluxton. Um, Shane, uh, your thoughts on, on that poll? Does it surprise you in any way? Surprise 3,000 didn't vote for him. But uh, look at it. I think, um, yeah, I mean, as I said earlier on, I, I think, you know, Declan O'Keefe from Kerry didn't make the top 10 there. So it's kind of funny. But sometimes when when, when people are in the news and, and that type of thing, they're in, in a an era that's more memorable than for goalkeepers than others, some get left behind. Um, for me, I suppose, growing up, uh, Paddy Cullen was, was one of my heroes. Um, John O'Leary, I always thought, was, was one of the best. And, and I think one of the names that came out there, uh, and funnily enough, we, we talk about Stephen Cluxton and the short kickouts, but um, Mark McNamara from Galway uh, was, was a f- sincere, fantastic exhibitionist of the small kickout. And indeed, in the 1998 Ireland final, gave an exhibition against against Kildare of the same I, I, with Kevin Walsh and himself. So, look, um, yeah, look, no surprise, I suppose, that Stephen Cluxton has been voted the best um, in the era. Um, as you know, I think his career can be can be split into two, maybe post uh, 2011 and pre 2011. Um, and certainly has coincided with, with a dominant era of football for, for Dublin as well, um, notwithstanding the fact that um, the kick-out strategy that they have adopted and that he's been at the, the forefront too has helped probably to change the game. But I do think also the way Dublin play and the way teams have played against Dublin, particularly since 2012, uh, the Donegal um, episode um, and the change in tactics, I think has allowed probably a freer uh, form of kickout strategy for a lot of teams, and and Dublin um, have obviously had a, an advantage uh, not only with having Stephen and goal, but also they had an advantage in big games and been in Crow Park and been able to to um, exercise the space that's there against teams that may not be all that familiar with the with the with the surroundings. Kerry maybe mm. uh, Donegal for an example, and maybe Mio uh, outside of those teams. Very few get into it on a regular basis at the business end of the season. But um, yeah, look at it. It's been it's it's a great list. A lot of great goalkeepers there. No surprise that Stephen is is the number one. But maybe a, a deeper introspective uh, at a future date uh, on on why things changed um, in terms of yeah. of strategy of teams uh, is probably needed. Mm. Um, Tomas, if you can stop glaring at that Cork jersey for a minute, I have a question for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> would you think Kerry keepers in football are treated a little bit like Kilkenny keepers in hurling? They don't kind of get recognised for their abilities because they tend to play on a very dominant team. Yeah, I suppose um, when you think of the 70s and the 80s, you're thinking of Paddy O'Mahony and Charlie Nelligan. Now, Charlie was high up on that list, I suppose. Um, and then in our own era, you had Declan O'Keefe, you had Peter O'Leary, you had Dermot Murphy, uh, Brendan Keeley towards the end. Yeah, I, I don't... 
I don't think in the modern era where you're talking of, you know, you're talking of Morgan, you're talking of Began above and Monaghan, you're obviously comparing everything off Cluxton. Kerry arguably have yet to kind of get a goalie that you could put in that bracket in terms of restarts. And that's the first thing you, you talk about when you're, you're discussing a goalie now is how it's crazy. Like, you know, it was mm. shot stopping, but it's now restarts. And it, it's crux and the change, all of that. But in terms of a carry point of view, um, well, I played behind Declan Keith and Dearborn Murphy and their job was just to bomb it down the middle. And our goal to kick out was hitting Dara. And that was it. Mm. There was no yeah. other plan B. There was no going short. There was nothing like that. Our plan A, plan B and plan C was go as long as you could to Dara. And our job then as a middle six was to make sure to get under him. If he didn't catch it, he, there would be a break. So, um, yeah, I think it's come on, on so much. Like Charlie Nelly, I remember my first um, my first introduction to goalkeeping was the, the that famous video, Kerry's Golden Years, and you had Paddy Mahoney, Charlie Nelligan, Billy Morgan, Paddy Cullen, Martin Furlong. They were the goalies that I knew growing up, and it, it was all the shot stopping we were watching. We weren't watching yeah. their kickouts certainly in, the, in that uh, video, but um, and Morgan, I used to always remember Morgan talking about the, the Kerry lads, and he used to hate that rule when you could fist the ball to the net. And he said, you'd see, you'd see Spillane running into you. You'd see uh, Owen Liston. You'd see John Egan. And you'd see all these guys running. He said he just wanted to take the head off them. Like, yeah. he was sick of that. Dude, like, he hated it. And there'd be spit coming out of his mouth when he'd be describing it. Like, you know, <laughs> bastards. <laughs> but uh, it's changed. Like, and, uh, you know, I mean, the new rule that had been brought in, they changed the rule because of the way Kerry were playing that time. And they changed the rule of the kick out because of Cluxton. They're trying to squash up the amount of space that he actually has to get those short runs off. So Cluxton is at the top of that list for a reason. And he, he changed the game. He changed the modern mm. game of football as we know it. Everybody yeah. is, is changed because of him. Like Rory, um, if you go from jump from Billy Morgan to, to Shane's play and then on to Cluxton, you kind of get an idea kind of, it seems like the goalkeepers in football are, are becoming a, a more introspective bunch of none on the Sunday game couch at the moment, shall we say. And Shane obviously stands out as a media performer of recent years, but they do seem to be more introspective than their uh, football counterparts. Yeah, no, no absolutely. Um, I, I, I remember a couple of years ago when the 2011 All-Ireland final, which obviously Tomás would remember well and for the wrong reasons, and we'll get back to that because there's a question I wouldn't mind asking Tomás about on that. But the 2011 final when Cluxton kicked a winning score, and I remember Kieran Whelan that night in the in in the TV studio, effectively saying, "Look, like if you go back when we were kids." Who was the last guy that usually got picked when you had like, you know, you know, bagsies and you had to pick two different teams? The last fellow was usually the worst player. And where did he always end up going? He was always put in goal. Now, that's no rapist, sir. Shane, can you can you shed some light on that, Shane? Is that why you ended up in goal? <laughs> no, funny enough, Tomas, I used to play outfield, so uh, I was lucky enough that way. I had a couple of, I had a, I had a half a decade outfield for Roscommon before I ever went back in goal. I was, oh, I was actually, uh, I was uh, getting hammered by by fellas like yourself from the at the back of the back of the butt of the lug and kicked in the back. And it's Jesus Christ, playing in goal is an awful lot easier than being marked by defenders. <laughs> all they wanted to do was bait the shit out of you around the place, you know. So, uh, um, do, you re- do you remember? I think it was the 1998 World Cup, and was maybe 98, possibly 94. I, I'm going to go in 98. And you remember Rene Higuita that played in goal for Colombia, the soccer world? He was Colombian, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. Colombian. And lovely he used, jerseys. He used to wear lovely flamboyant jerseys. Yeah. And and he used to come off his line and he used to do those famous scorpion kicks when he'd save the ball and he'd back flick it mm. with his legs and he you know he'd do all sorts of crazy stuff. And he got caught one day, I think it was against Cameroon, where they moved the ball in behind him, they dispossessed him, and they kicked it into an empty net. And I remember it came back to studio and Rude Hullet was actually in the studio and he said, Look, it's like this goalkeepers are goalkeepers because they can't play football. <laughs> <laughs> That's very harsh. I think they have to balance things up here now. Balance things up. Yeah, I, I, and, and, and now you look 
you look at them in the in the Premier League, it's actually almost begun. It's gone full circle. They, you mean you have Allison and you have Edison and oh. you have De Gea now, and they all the first the first rule of thumb is that they would play out from the back. And and to be fair, Gaelic football has gone that way as well. You, you see, Niall Morgan probably is 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 um, the best at coming out and playing outfield. Um, Cluxon doesn't do that so much. Um, Sean Patton maybe in Donegal does it quite well. Uh, but a lot of these lads, uh, even John O'Leary back in the Graham day, I think Brody, Charlie as Graham well, Brody maybe. And Leash. Graham Brody and Leash. Uh, a lot of these lads play outfield for their clubs. Um, yeah. Even Cluxon, I think, plays outfield for his club as well. So it gives you a good appreciation of, of what's required when you're an outfield player going back into goal as, as vis-a-vis a goalkeeper uh, just did per se, you know. Well, look, Shane, you you were a pioneer. You were sorry, Roy. You were a pioneer on this, Shane. We're just gonna. I'm just gonna share something with you here, lads, and you can just watch this for a minute. Um, this is uh, Hollywood star Chris O'Dowd explaining why uh, Chris uh, why uh, Shane Curran is one of his heroes. So uh, let me just play this for you here now. Uh, bear with me. I'm gonna have to uh, pull out my headphones. So uh, let you uh, let you enjoy. of out-of-your-box crazy goalkeepers and he could save a penalty and score a 45 but at the same time he'd be just as happy to ride a bull into a church and he could do more in the space of two hours he was gangbusters I was a goalkeeper growing up, and I would have been the minor keeper while he was the senior keeper. I, I would take advice to him like I would take advice from a drunk clown. He was the one himself. He was the Bruce Grobelar of kind of Gaelic footballers at the time. And here comes the adventurous goalkeeper. Right, so there you go, the Bruce Grobelar of his time, if I may say. That's uh, just words in fairness now. Uh, let me just unstop sharing that screen and we'll come back to you. So Shane, look, you are you are the guy, I think, when people think goalkeepers are mad, people think, you know, they do think of you. And uh, do you think that's an unfair caricature or do you admit that being slow nuts to you as a goalkeeper? Ah, look at it, I suppose, um, you know, when I started at it uh, back in the late 90s or early, to, yeah, late 90s. But again, it, it was kind of funny. I've been an outfield player, so... It wasn't um, it wasn't that much of a of a change because you knew you could you had certain certain skill sets that you could get away with and um, fairness the players in Roscommon and the managers they, they encouraged it as well uh, in particular John Tobin um, you know was very good uh, Tommy Carr came after him and actually ended up scoring I think it was ended up in top scorer in the Connacht Championship in 2004 I think the goal and the point against uh, against Sligo in the championship but you know. When you kind of break the mould or when you seem to be maybe a little bit different or extrovert than, than others, um, well then you're going to be labelled. Um, I kind of laugh at it now because you see guys doing it now and, and, and uh, they're, they're, they're um, been lauded. And, and rightly so, it's great to see, you know, it's great to see Morgan and, and I like to see the players playing and expressing themselves. And that's even all over the pitch. It's not just goalkeepers. I mean, Tomas just alluded to it earlier on about halfbacks, but uh, he was one of these rampaging halfbacks cornerbacks now are going up taking scores the game has really moved on um a lot in terms of how how players are coached and you know i was fortunate um i was allowed to kind of uh, play that way uh, i could play that way and um you know i enjoyed playing that way and it brought a different kind of element to the game and and teams i think took it on board over time and uh, uh, I played outfield in with my club and in goal with my club and you'd all, always be coming out. But now it's, it's much more, the game is much more more uh, open, I think, and um, players are dropping off into zones. Goalkeepers are allowed to come out really unchallenged now. If you look at Morgan, he can take the ball 50, 60 yards without even having a forward in his way, uh, yeah, in many so. Uh, ways. So um, it has changed and... and uh, that's just the way it is. Um, I, when I played in uh, Morton Tomas, we had a great time, great crack, and, and enjoyed the matches and enjoyed the fun. And we were very competitive. And Roscommon, luckily enough, for four, five, six years, 
uh, held her own in Division One, a couple of great games against Kerry and, and Dublin and all, <laughs> all, I remember, all the, I remember the big that, counties. Um, that 2003 game in Crow Park where uh, I, we, we had a team meeting before it and uh, Paddy had discussed and I wasn't really paying attention to the meeting or anything but it was my first time actually hearing Shane's name but it was described as cake and uh, somebody, <laughs> Paddy said that we actually discussed you coming off your line because it wasn't anything that anybody <laughs> actually did but he didn't just, he, I, he obviously got the nickname wrong because he 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 just cakes plural was was cakes. He said that if, if, if cakes if cakes starts running you allow him run do not tackle cakes so I had to turn around and he says who or what is cakes he's the he's the Ross Common goalie he's mad he says he's the Ross Common goalie well, you were speaking it uh, speak, yeah, we, speaking we, we, speaking we, of cake. This is an app I like, and I would recommend this to anybody if they do want a, a good a good uh-huh. read. The light, it's a it's a great old yarn. But I just was I was flicking through it because I, 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 I had a few things picked out, and one of the things Shane that I loved was any GA keeper will tell you that part of his job is to get chatting to the umpires. Now most of them ready enough old skins, and you could get the banter going with them no bother. But if I smell the drink off them, that'd be the opening gambit. Jez, there's a right smell of porter off you. You were out last night, Bucky, I'd say. You had a right few pints. Did you have a late one? <laughs> they said they usually laugh along with you, and you wouldn't mind a fella like that, because at least you had him on your side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the many time I, the many time I stood beside a defender and they'd be reeking the drink and you'd be nearly as bad yourself as <laughs> Especially in National League games in the 90s, I remember playing, I think we played uh, down in a match, and Jesus Christ, Mick Higgins, I think, was corner back, and I was corner forward, and, and it would have been a, it would have been a, an exercise for the Gardaí to see which one was uh, uh, would have broken the bag first. But anyhow, <laughs> that was back in the days of, of uh, October to, to December was the time you could go out and play with a few pints and have a bit of crack. But uh, yeah, I sure look at you know look. I mean, you know, we had great times. We we, we had mighty times and mighty fun. Uh, I think over the years they got a little bit too officious and and uh, you couldn't have the crack with them. But you knew that then. You know, you weren't going to be taking the mick. Uh, waving things wide when they weren't wide, or looking for 45s or not 45s when they were blatant 45s, or trying to trying to get on their side, trying to get inside their head. But look, the game is the game has moved on. It's it's a. Uh, geez, I, I always remember Tommy Carr saying when we play a game of golf himself and decked him, maybe he's have a Sean Finnegan. That if he won one wish, it would be to play one more game, you know. And and uh, I, I do. I'd love to play one more game now, you know. If it was just mm. a bit. 31 or 32 or 30. If the legs could carry me, as a fella said one time, when you're young, you're all legs and no head. And when you're old, you're all he- all head and no legs. <laughs> so unfortunately, the legs don't bring you anymore to where the head wants to bring you. I'm fascinated as a junior B goalkeeper, the idea of neutral umpires, never mind drunk umpires. A neutral umpire <laughs> would be an amazing thing. <laughs> and that is true. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, you, you, yourself would... We get the, like I said, the carry the carry keepers. Maybe they're they they get an unfair doing, but you get the impression you played in front of some very stable, sane individuals. We were here talking Anthony Daly last week, and he obviously played in front of Davy Fitzgerald, and who was rarely sane or stable. I was wondering, do you have any yarns about your days with carry keepers? Anything stand out? No, I think um, I remember. I suppose Deccan and Dermot, they were just solid. There were just mm. there was no real, I won't say finesse. Like it was a skill in itself to hit the, the same target. You know, I was listening to the the hurling podcast last night, and Brendan Cummins saying that the that he had um, a big circle out around. He was hitting it through that circle for mm. like the lads knew wherever Dara was. That was where that was our plan. Like, and you know, it was easy yeah. enough if you had somebody to jump. The, the high midfielders aren't as such anymore. You know, Brian Fenton mm. does it a bit for Dublin if they need an out and out. But uh, Fenton would win more kickouts on the run. But um, no, I think with club we had we had right fun with club because we had a guy um, we had a guy in 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 from goal. What was it? Thomas McIntyre was his goal. We had a nickname for him. Who was your man in goal for the the England sixty six? Gordon Banks. We used Banks. To call Gordon him. Banks. Yeah. So Gordon Banks. But he liked to be stylish, you know. And our plan more so with the club was he the be- we the best fielder in the country at midfield so the plan was to hit Dara every single time like and uh, 
if he didn't do oh. that, geez, we would kill him. Like, we would pin him to the wall inside the showers or some dressing room over in Glen Fleskill one day. Like, and we, we were basically bullying him into the ground to make sure he did what he was told. Like, but um, no, there was no. The lads were. Declan was fiery. Dermid was quiet. Dermid was, was, was quiet. But Declan would answer you back and Declan would bark at you inside in the dressing room. And Dirk. Both, all of them were very good at shouting and roaring. I remember Murphy gave a performance against Galway above the rain that night and he was absolutely outstanding. But I did an interview after the game and it's actually quite funny if you dig it up. Uh, I was asked, he made one save, but he left in about two goals or three goals, I think, uh, on the same night. And uh, the question was asked to me live on television, like, you know, well, um, Dermot Murphy did everything in his power to, to win that game for you and I said Jesus I counteract that I think he did everything in his power to lose us that game <laughs> with the goals he left in and I started laughing and that was actually live on television But and I said it to Murphy after but uh, he was brilliant the shot stopping was huge but it's interesting to know like Kerry's still struggling because any match you look at any match you break down it's an area um, you don't have a pattern, you don't have a Morgan, you don't have a Begging, you don't have a Trucks, and the pressure seems to be ramping up every year because you're scrutinising it so much. You're actually looking mm. at it, and you know this. It's a, it's an era of stats now, and as a defender and as a forward, people, I suppose that's where Shane is talking about. You know, you're scrutinised the enjoyment levels, I suppose, and it, it it goes back to that thing where you know, you might have possession 10 times. What you did with that possession, I'd rather see a fella take a chance and lose possession than actually be careful yeah. and give a hand pass five yards to the right or left. But mm. with goalies, there is no place to hide for them. You either get possession or you don't get possession and that's the end of it. Um, and it's an area where, where Kerry, I suppose, they have at the moment Shane Ryan inside there. But, you know, when I think back, Benny Tierney was with Armagh, Kevin O'Dwyer was with Cork. I remember Davy Byrne being with Dublin. Pascal mm-hmm. McConnell was with Tyrone. Tyrone, Mark yeah. Namara was with Galway. Galway. Was one of those lads going short, like there was an excellent goalies and very, very good. But there was scrapping ball, like you were a halfback. Mm. Your job was to get under that breaking ball or a half forward, and that's Her what you gals in training, body. like. Yeah, and that's that's what it was like. And I, I hated then towards the end. We we didn't do a lot of work on it inside and in training with Jack Connor, but we would do the odd time trying to do shark kickouts. But the problem with that was everybody in the pitch knew we were trying shark kickouts. So the forwards were being extra tight on you. And I used to hate having to make a run. Your job was to lose your forward. So you were sprinting here, sprinting there. Next thing the ball was gone 40 yards out the middle because the goalie wouldn't bloody go short anyway. And you were 30 yards away from where you should be. And then you're away from your man as well. I hated it because we didn't have a system that was mm. proper and worked properly. Now, you, we're not hearing the chunkets, but I'd love to have an in-depth uh, interview with Cluxton to see exactly how he makes and how he dictates what happens inside. I'd say he would frighten the shite out of other goalies and teams around the country with the level of, of, of detail they go into actually practising their kickouts. Because I remember... Um, I remember the, it was their midfielders running into space. They'd create the space. The half-backs would get out... But he changed year on year. He changed every year. I, I was saying that earlier on, where we had it, um, we had the percentages got that he hit over eighty percent of the kickouts to the two half forwards, Paul Finn and Jeremy Conley. I was one of the half back line, so I was told by Fitzmaurice at the time. I think was it was it for the thirteen final, or it was earlier. I think it was eleven, um, and we were told, you know, when the ball was in the air by Kerry going wide or going over the bar. You didn't give a damn. You were up tight, touch tight, grabbing on your man's jersey, basically, so that he wasn't going to get that kick out. And midstream, he hadn't done it all season. He hadn't done it all year, in fact. He went to his cornerbacks about 10 or 11 minutes into that match. And our corner forwards hadn't prepared. We hadn't even, dis- imagine that. We hadn't even discussed that this was a potentially what he would do. And that's what he did. And he, 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 they, they win most games based on possession. And yeah. he's the kitty, like, and like, I find it in like every year, Rory, you were above in meetings, like, we'd have meetings every year, and yeah. I would say, like, Began would be massive with his kickouts and everything. Every year, you he's arguably your all star every single year. There's nobody that put up a, a you could put an argument, but for me, like, there was years where I was saying, Cluxon, Cluxon is your all star, and but people were saying, oh, he, his standards were so high, like. You're spot on to us. Like the pe- people would often, we would we would finish up a Sunday game, program, series, whatever it might be, and the first thing that people would say, oh, you never did Cluxton's kickouts last night. They were brilliant. But sure, we were doing. We'd like 
that's just a Every given. Year, yeah. yeah. You know, like, like, I, what are you going to? You're going to say the same things about how he's able to, you know, over and over again. It, you know. Yeah. I, I think, though, like, I think it was Tomas. Tomas alluded to it there. Tomas alluded to it there, though. The, the the reason a lot there's a couple of reasons why Dublin are ahead of other teams, and one of them is their ability, firstly and foremostly, to practice collectively on a regular basis without having to travel huge, huge distances. Uh, and in, ma- in many cases, the, 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 their practice is, is what makes them perfect. And there's no doubt about it that they've spent an awful, an awful lot of time on kickouts and on kickout strategies. But also at the same course, the game has also changed tactically. I think, Tomás, if you look at last year's All-Ireland final, for 25, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, Kerry actually went and pressed the Dublin kickout and it was difficult for Dublin to get out. As good as Cluxton was, it was very difficult for them to get out. The problem was Kerry couldn't do that for 70 minutes because maybe they didn't have the physical conditioning. Then they dropped off and suddenly the spaces are, 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 you know, arrive all over the pitch. And in Crow Park, if you, if you do a summary of the match, matches and analysis of the matches over the last seven, eight years in particular, you would find that most teams are operating on a 4v7 basis at the back. So your forwards, four forwards marking seven defenders. The other two have dropped off to give a cushion to, to the defence or the midfield, which may be. So a lot of teams have actually given up the short kickout or they've decided that they haven't got the physical capabilities to do it over a full seven. Now, what's, it's now full 80 minutes, really, the, la- the last few years. It's a yeah. full 80 minutes you have to go to. I'm not saying, for, for example, that Cookson wasn't good at uh, exponent or kicking the ball out. He's a very good boot on him. Brilliant, brilliant tactical awareness. But I think it, he's been fortunate. He's had the skill set, but also fortunate as well that there's been a change in how other teams have adapted to how Dublin play the game. And in particular, Donegal, if you take the All Ireland semi finals and finals that Dublin and Donegal played uh, over the last number of years, Donegal basically gave up the kickouts. Kerry in the replay last year, for some reason, gave up the kickouts. Instead of pressing up and seeing could could they actually could they actually make a difference? And you will find that over the next couple of years, Evan Comerford will seamlessly uh, fall into the number one spot in Dublin because their practice, how they practice, they're together on a regular basis. They're an almost professional team, and that allows them to be ahead of the curve of everybody else because maybe in Kerry. They don't have the time to go through X, Y, and Z. In Roscommon, maybe they have to do. They have to hone in on a certain aspect of midfield play or defence play, and something gives. But with Cluxton and Dublin, they have that time, and they've, they've given that time to been very, very good at what they've done. And he's been he's been at the front. He's been to the forefront of it, and he's a brilliant, brilliant uh, restart or kick out player. I think to, he's overall goalkeeping. I would say contend that there's been a lot better shot stoppers over the last number of years. I think the best shot stopper has been David Clark by a country mile for Mayo. Um, in the year, you could say that he's not technically been that good. He doesn't dominate his box. Most of the stuff he flaps or he punches, but his kickouts and his restarts are what make him or what has made and Tomas has cr- mm. made Dublin the team yeah. that had been very Wonder difficult to play against. One other aspect, though, that he is very good at, and I'm sure, look, it's something that you would have uh, engaged with yourself, and I'd be interested in both you and Tomas on this, is that um, set pieces and uh, placed balls, 45s, like uh, even in Rory Beggins' case, 65s, um, yeah. penalties, you know, long-range frees. When did you notice that particular fad start to come in? Who would have been the first manager to push it, the first goalkeeper? And now you have a situation where goalkeepers are regularly, you know, um, the free takers, certainly from longer range. And obviously the fit, most famous one being that 2011 final when he stuck the winner. Yeah, well, I remember uh, the, talking about that. I remember the 2011. That was the first time I really remembered <laughs> the goalie kicking. Um, I can't really remember who was it, first of all. Shane, you might. Who was the first goalie that started that off? I can't well, really I, remember. I, 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 I humbly, humbly say that um, I still hold the record, funnily enough. I'm the only keeper in a championship to score a goal and a point. Um, and that was in 2004 against Sligo. I ended up as top scorer in the kind of championship match um, in the kind of semi-final. 
<laughs> oh, did you so, know, that a penalty? You know, no, need to be humble. No, that's a penalty, it. Uh, yeah, a penalty uh, in the first half, uh, followed by Paul Taylor scored a penalty on me after that. And I kicked what I thought was the winner from about, come here, lads, now, I, I am suffering a little bit from, from Alzheimer's. I think it was 95 yards out, <laughs> not, not 45. <laughs> but uh, uh, I kicked it from around there. Yeah, but it was, a, it was a good one into the wind, about 55 yards out. I remember, I remember Eamon O'Hara being in front of me, and he given me tons of abuse. And next thing, all he done is he put his two hands up like that. And it was like, Jesus, thanks, Eamon. All I have to do is put, them, put the ball between your two hands. You're only 14 yards away. If I strike it right, bang, straight between the post. And sure enough, it goes straight between the post. And I'm going back nearly getting a heart attack on the way back because I hadn't done that much training outfield. <laughs> and uh, get back into goal. Think it's the fucking winner. And uh, slide we collide. But we won the game. Uh, we won the game. We ended up playing in the own kind of final. So, yeah, but I was doing the fairness, Tommy, probably what happened around that time, if you remember, lads, outfield players started taking a lot of uh, points from their hands. Right. So the, the old style free takers from kicking from the ground, they actually stopped practicing. And this is where it's actually come in over the last number of years. The only people now that practice kicking the ball off the ground are the goalkeepers. Because yeah. they have to do it from they have to do it from from the kick out. So, in terms of kicking forty fives, the Peter Canavans, Frankie Dolans, the Morris Fitzes, all them lads, they were the lads that were doing it, but they stopped because they were taking the free kicks out of the hand from twenty one and thirty one and forty yards, and the forty five became much more troublesome. So the only guy that could really do it was the fellow that was practicing those type of kickouts, that type of length on a regular basis. And mm. I think that's where it become, I, I'd started it. And I, and I was doing it in club games for a long number of years anyhow. Um, and there was a few around Roscombe that were doing it as well. But it, it kind of just grew, I think, exponentially from there. Um, with the changing in the rule from the, the free kick, then the 45 nearly always, nearly by default, um, fell back to the fellow that was practicing his kicking from the ground. Yeah. And Tomas, and Tomas, just while we have you, because that's something that I'm sure a lot of people would like to hear or know, that iconic photograph of you handing the ball to Cluxton at the end of the 2011. What was, like, what was your thought process there? Um, I remember it because it was obviously a huge game. It was the first time the Dubs had crossed the line and I was actually in possession of the ball when the final whistle went and um geez I, the, obviously the hill 16 was right behind me so i wasn't going up that direction anyway i was going the opposite <laughs> I, was going the canal. I knew i had to stay out in the pitch because you have to say out to, to you know to, to clap them on and and oh geez i wanted to go for a dressing room but i said look i'll stay out for a while anyway so i said i go down towards the canal end and of course i met i met uh Cluxton on the way up and i did it just ran through me i said look I had the ball in my hand. Now, obviously, balls changed throughout the match. You know, I don't know, was it the ball he kicked over the bar? Mm. Uh, but I said, look, I, I, I was just, it was just, it wasn't that I went looking for him. I didn't go looking for him, but he just actually happened to pass me. So I said, here. Um, and I didn't have any chat or anything with him. Like, <laughs> somebody told me he rifled it into the, into the, Cusick stand after it, um, which was which was funny in itself as well because and it wasn't out of it obviously went around a few days. Uh, we went down to Killarney and we were drowning our sorrows down in Killarney, and um, it obviously went around and saying, "Oh, it's terrible form, Tomas did this brilliant thing." And look, if I hadn't crossed paths with him, I wouldn't have given him the ball. It wasn't as if I was going out looking for <laughs> the fact that I actually passed him. I did. But I was actually on the Wednesday then, and I'd gone around, and I was getting calls from fellas from Dublin saying, geez, it was very bad for him by your man and all this. And in fairness to him, I, I wasn't paying much attention to it at all, Dad. I was on my way back down to Cork on the Wednesday, um, and I got a phone call, and I was in the farm to talk to nobody now on the Wednesday, and it was actually Cluxton. And Cluxton rang me and said, look, just to explain, he said, I didn't, me kicking that ball away was in no way uh, an insult to you or anything like that. He says, and it just goes, gives you an insight to the guy. Like he isn't yeah. a guy you know, that is yeah. for, for all the, the, the razzmatazz and, and the sport, nostalgia man. and all that. Like he was just mm. a guy. I love the way he operates. Like, because, you know, Shane was talking about it there. I have a feeling and I, I, I would talk to guys. Do you know the way I would say 
coaches will say, right, we have to work on this tonight. I would say that Cluxton himself takes the guys he needs aside yeah. in his own time and actually dictates what happens. And I would say a lot of the stuff <clears throat> is down to him. Like Because I would say down the years, I played against Cluxton at the very, very start. And by no way was Cluxton anywhere near what he is now. And, you know, I remember him coming up to me one night inside in some place in Dublin and uh, he had a hatred. He had a hatred for us, like, because we were on top at the time, like, and um, he made no bones about it either. But, I mean, the way he developed himself and turned himself around, not turned himself around, but just out of pure um, diligence and work rate or whatever you want to call it, but he was just... He changed everything, like, and I would say, or more so than the obviously the coaches and managers, yeah. But I'd say this guy was this guy was like another selector inside there. This guy was dictating what they were actually doing in terms of restarts throughout. Mm. And I don't know, is there any player, Murphy out of Donegal? I have a feeling would would dictate stuff. I would mm. say Cluxton would have a hand in a lot of stuff, not with the management, but he spends so much time as a teacher. But you'd hear the stories about him landing on to training early. I'd say he would get the fellas like, and I've often heard Kenny and Fenton meeting up and dissecting training sessions. And I would put him in that category as well. Like, yeah. It's not like, I'd say you just live for it. They live for it. And they, yeah. everything, every waking hour is how can we make this better? How can we improve it? How uh, he go over not the good kicks, the bad kicks. How was I cut out there? Yeah. I'll actually do this now and whatever goal he left in I, was it Gavin that was saying that he was there with video analysis for about an hour and a half checking out his footing Jesus Christ like when you That's think right, about yeah. it like, so it, all just, it, all, it all just adds to the, the mystique of the man I suppose and he does I don't think we can argue that he's he's come out on top of our polls so I think just for the sake of argument here can I get Shane who do you think do you agree Cluxon's the best of the uh, say of the current era current goalkeepers do you agree he's the best or is there anyone you'd have ahead of him for any reason it's not it's not that I'm not saying he, he, it's, it's not that he's not the best um, and certainly I agree uh, Tomas is 100% right I think he's probably taken on a leadership role if you look at a lot of goalkeepers in a lot of codes um, up you, you learn your craft probably through your 20s and you learn a lot of a lot of hard lessons um and i think you know up to maybe 2011 he was he was certainly a good goalkeeper he wasn't i wouldn't have put him even in the best dublin goalkeepers or the best i played against in that that those times but in the last seven or eight years i think that the confidence he probably got from the 2011 win the confidence dublin got but he then as a leader approaching his 30s, became a different player. And I'd say Tomás is 100% right. He takes that leadership role uh, very easily. He, he obviously gets, I'd say he, he, he's, he just eats, drinks and sleeps it. Uh, and he's got a team of players uh, and a group of players and a county that have structured themselves in the right way. And they're facilitated to do that. But they also have to have it within themselves to do. And uh, he certainly... Certainly, there's no doubt he's done that, and um, he's he's certainly a fantastic, fantastic goalkeeper. There have been, as I said, I think goalkeepers that, you know, I think have been better shot stoppers uh, and better in the air. David Clark stands to mind. Uh, Jim Murphy was a great goalkeeper as well. Uh, to me, um, Martin McNamara was was a great goalkeeper. John O'Leary, great goalkeeper. But the overall package, I think, from a leadership point of view. Um, Obviously, the kickouts um, Cluxton has has brought it to another another level, uh, but you will find that Evan Comerford will seamlessly slip into to his mm. position uh, in the, in the coming seasons, if not this season, because of the way uh, teams play. Firstly, against Dublin, uh, unless some team comes and decides, well, we got to have a right cut at them here for seventy minutes and pressure kickouts, uh, and maybe also that you know we decide to bring the games out of Crow Park a bit because. Um, they've been fortunate, you know. You get the big games really and truly over the last decade. Have Dublin had to play three big games a season, maybe two semi final, or Ireland semi final and final, uh, and they very seldom come a cropper anywhere up to that. So, um, he, he's he's made a huge, huge, uh, huge contribution to the game, uh, without a doubt. This Dublin team have made a huge contribution to the game as well, mm. and uh, it's up to somebody else to follow it. Yeah, Tomas, who would you, if you couldn't have Cluxton, who would you have in your current 15? Ah, uh, look, uh, the reason I, I think, you know, uh, I don't know, will your man Comerford seamlessly 
fit into what Dublin do because I think it's it's more than just his ability to kick out. It's his ability under pressure. It's his ability not to crack. Because if you look at it, if you look at Morgan and Began and Patton and the Kerry goalies that have been inside there, I've seen them implode. I've seen them lose six, seven, eight kickouts in a match. You'll never, mm-hmm. even though he is the most scrutinised keeper of the whole lot of them, you'll never see him lose more than three or four in a game, like even the biggest games. And that's Kerry doing their homework to the utmost. I remember one game, everybody was going on about it. Kerry got a goal and a point off two kickouts that he lost and said everybody was roaring. We've been cracked, we've been cracked, we've been cracked. I think three kickouts he missed in the whole game. Do you know, and there we are saying, oh, we had him cracked. We didn't, our arse have him cracked. Like, um, <laughs> I, I, I think like... The other goalkeeper is like you've Patton. I, I I think Patton is is outstanding with his restarts. She's the one that that uh, who was it was a Monaghan that put Against the full Monaghan press there recently. Yeah, he's very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, and they very cheated, good. and there was just one runner. But I mean, Cluxton, look, Mur- the tip save that that Murphy got arguably, I think Kerry could have gone on and won it had he scored that. That's like mm-hmm. Cluxton is constantly working on save. He is very good. Maybe not as good as some of the shot stoppers down the years but still at a level that is ex- extremely good. I, I just think, I think it's pointless talking about other goalies when he's around, like, to be quite yeah. honest with you. Do you know? Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. and like, I have great time for other goalies. I think there's brilliant goalies out there, but nobody, Jesus Christ, I give him mixtures all star. Sneak <laughs> <laughs> preview of a meeting to come when hopefully the GA season gets going again, lads. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Um, you love that a, a, a fine exploration of the art of goalkeeping. Just remind you all, you can watch this on YouTube as long as my computer doesn't blow up trying to do it like it nearly did last week. And you can get it on all your podcast apps, the usual spots, Spotify, etc. And uh, just want to say RTE Online and the News Now app will have lots of GA over the week and we're we're starting to filter in a bit of GA on TV, Rory, are we? Hopefully um, over the next couple of weeks, all right, Chad, there'll be a little bit, there'll be, yeah, but um, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, so lovely stuff, lads. Uh, I'd like to thank Shane, Tomas, and Roy for joining me. And hopefully, you can join us later this week when we will discuss the hurling full back line, which will be uh, your choice of three stick wielding maniacs. Should be a good listen. Thanks very much, and we'll <laughs> chat to you later. Pleasure, fellas. Pleasure. Pleasure, fellas. Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the bar. Oh, holy Moses. <laughs>